Bartleby in pictures. One, two, three. Ah. Ah. Nothing like a refreshing yerba mate to start off an episode of The Talkie. Sure enough. Ah, hi, everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of The Talkies. Three filmmakers talking about talkies. If you have not seen Annihilation yet and want to and don't want to be spoiled, which really you don't, you not don't. for this one. You don't want to. <laughs> you, so t- stop watching. Go watch the movie. Take your cell phone with you, and then you can start the video up again as soon as the movie's <laughs> over. You can walk into the, th- the the foyer of the theater, turn on the talkies, and people will gather you around go. you and be like, what are you watching? And you'll be like, this is the talkies. Check it out. You should go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And if That's you what do, you should do. If you do that, um, if you do that, and we get uh, subscribers in a certain time of day, and you can verify that you recommended your friend at that same time, if you send us your email and mailing address, we will mail you... Um, one hundred dollars. We didn't discuss this. Uh, uh, how oh, about? I uh, don't think we'll do that. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, we'll, we'll give you some uh, shares of equity in Carmen Line Studios. <laughs> no. Uh, no. 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 Um, no. We'll say. I think things. we have. A, <laughs> yeah. Maybe that. <laughs> have like a broken microphone. <laughs> ship you that. Much gratitude. We'll uh, cheer, we'll cheers. Yerba we'll cheers. We'll cheers to you. We'll cheers. mention you on the podcast. Hey, we could do that. We could All, right. Do that. All right. Point is, <laughs> spoilers are coming in five, four. Wait, we gotta start from ten. No, no, no. That's ridiculous. <laughs> one, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. In Gone with the Wind, it was the South the whole time. Oh. What? Yeah, the South. You believe that? I can't believe that. Yep. Spoiler. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. I feel like every movie, every talkies episode, we're going to have a different spoiler of a different movie. We, we will. It's then someone's going to be like, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> so my biggest thing with Annihilation that was uh, kind of pushed me off from it was... Um, I can follow the story. <sighs> yeah. I mean, like, I really felt like you could take that... It's so the bulk of the film is following these group this group of girls through the this Women. zone. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> this group of people. Yeah. Oh, post gender, yeah. huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> you have no respect. <laughs> For what? For what? Girls or women? <laughs> so you were saying these group of people, about these people, human they're beings. going through the zone. Oh wait, this isn't stalker. My bad. Uh, Will you just finish your thought. <laughs> <laughs> they're going through uh, wherever that place is. Inside yeah. the glimmer. Sure. Glimmer. Yeah. yeah. Cool. The shimmer. Shimmer. Yeah. Shimmer. So they're in the shimmer, and I feel like you could have replaced pretty much every single fantasy element of it so all the weird it, all the designs and stuff were awesome and the look of the place was awesome and really fabulous or whatever yeah. but i felt like it was kind of um hollow so like if you took that away if you took the aesthetic away you'd be left with a relatively generic um jungle survival movie that doesn't really do anything that unique or interesting so you're saying if you took away the object that the movie was about yeah so like if you took away <laughs> no i'm saying if you like take that. away the colors like if yeah. you literally take away the strangeness of where they are yeah and you just had regular alligator regular monsters right it wouldn't be that it, interesting but, it, but it, see this is what i liked so much about it is that it wasn't about the people so much as it was about the place that they were in mm-hmm. and the place that they were in had explanations of the reason why it was the way it was and it grew exponentially from there to where it exploded in the third act Mm -hmm. so that's where it got um where i liked it a lot in the third act and that last section was amazing dude but i was really honestly struggling with that middle section i was like this is kind of i disagree because what i i disagree i don't think you feel that way Um, (laughs) (laughs) because uh it was so much more than an aesthetic Mm. It was inside their bodies. Yeah, the, I know? mean, like there was cool their monster DNA stuff. had been yeah. shuffled with everything else around them. I mean that that created a sense of paranoia in me that is greater than being stalked by a lion, mm. right? Man versus lion's been around forever. 
it may not, it's probably not going to end well for you, but at least you know what it is. Mm -hmm. You can wrap your brain around that. But a bear who eats your friend and then absorbs her voice and parts of her skeleton. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Pretty freaking that was crazy. That, that was the best uh, design of the whole movie, I think, was the voice but of so, that monster. So I don't so, think it's an aesthetic, though. I, I, wouldn't, well, I wouldn't say it's an aesthetic. See, well, I think it is, though. Because I really don't think that there's much going on beyond. So there, there's the cool monsters. There's the monster thing in his gut swimming around, which was really nasty. Yeah, that scene that was, was really nasty. Gross, yeah. And then how about Oscar Isaac yeah. seemingly almost like enjoying? Yeah, like sticking his hand in there. And yeah, like, he puts his hand and he's like, like yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. But I'm yeah. not sure what that was about. He's like, yeah, but like the place me, where that guy's just, body like melted into the wall yeah. and yeah. turned into like, some kind of crazy mosaic yeah. was just again who's who's the designer that did all of the artwork for um alien see hg geiger see when <laughs> when i was this all the, looked a lot like when that. i was in the bathroom i was thinking this is freaking modern day hg geiger. <laughs> it's geiger-esque <laughs> geiger-esque <laughs> yeah yeah um I just right, didn't fin- like. Finish I didn't, your, your moaning. I didn't and then like you can that. Get on to the good stuff. <laughs> I didn't like that it was the one by one. They each die one by one, which I feel like I've seen a bunch of times before. That's true. That that is pretty. Uh, I still disagree though. You about, disagree that he feels that way. Yeah, I disagree that he feels that way. <laughs> it's Wrong just, again, Taylor. <laughs> one by one, they all die, and then um, I also felt like there was potential there. Like there was one moment that really, really affected me was when they first go into the shimmer. And they go in and they cut away to some, some B-roll and then they cut back and she's in the tent and they yeah. wake up and they're like, what's yes, happening? It's I been like that. three days. Yeah. Right. I don't remember anything. It is surprising they really didn't cool. return to that. Yeah. yeah, that was interesting. But that was weird. They all wake up. They don't know yeah. how they got where they are and, and they count their food rations and realize they've already been out there for several days. Yeah. And they, none of them have any memory of it. I, right. I felt like, it, I felt like there was a lot of potential that – didn't quite get reached. So, so when you would say, where, where you say that, um, I want to go back to. So replace, replace the alligator. Well, the alligator was just an alligator for all. He was just I, an alligator, but he was an alligator whose DNA had been shifted. It's a really yeah. big alligator. <laughs> but so there's okay. So there maybe aesthetics the wrong word. There is. An explanation for why the things no, are okay, the, the why why the things are the something. way they are. Here's your problem. No, wait. Let me finish. The why things you don't need to. are the way they problem. are, but that's just not enough for me. Like they can say, "Oh, the DNA is being messed with." Yeah. Can I recap? Uh, okay. <laughs> allow me so to summarize. What? It's you, all the same stuff. The second act of the movie yeah. is essentially on a, a rehashing of the. Um, atypical survival in the jungle yeah. storyline group of people against the elements one by one they're getting picked off until there's only one left done right? well though granted so, done well yeah. so but that's your point that yeah. it's just that again yeah whereas the beginning and the end are extremely unique right and and remember uh, very memorable yes yeah. right that's my point that that is a fine fair point and not that doesn't. That does not <laughs> take anything away from the movie <laughs> either. <laughs> See, and then so then it gets to an expectation thing. I I wanted something more from it. I wanted it to be like the first and third act the whole way through, rather than then go into genre stuff. Got you. Okay, so you're you're saying that you think it trapped it into like a monster film? Yeah. In the second act. Yeah. Because so so what I what I saw was. Uh, they had the way they edited this was they kept cutting back to her in the future where she was reflecting back and before they even went in the shimmer they said all those people had already died so we know that they were all going to die first yeah. first lines of the movie yeah, yeah. which killed the tension for me also no, see now that's just so if if that's not tension though then i wouldn't say it's a monster film but that's where it gets me because the tension is killed but they still shoot it like it's I supposed to be. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say they shot it like suspense. He wouldn't say but that. But they did. He wouldn't say that. <laughs> I would say the opposite. <laughs> I, I Honestly, I felt in some pretty intense suspense throughout the whole second act. But that suspense 
was created by the fact that I had no handle on what was happening in this reality. It was terrifying right. that you could not anticipate any outcomes in this world, right? And and knowing that your very self mm. was disintegrating into it. Mm. That that made the suspense for me, not the stalking animal yeah. or anything like that. That's, that's to me, the scarier part too, was yeah. when the character played by Gina Rodriguez, who was named when Anya. When she turned. Yeah. When, she, when she flipped yeah. and she tied up the three people and was losing her mind. Yeah. That was the scariest part in the second act. That honestly just frustrated me. Like, I was just frustrated at that point. So at that point, I did get a little frustrated, too, because I was like, okay, I want to see more of the movie. Yeah. I don't care about you may, right It now. maybe lasted a little too long. But. Yeah. But actually, I thought they cut it in half pretty well when the bear came back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Which when she heard the freaking when, terrifying. The case. Like, can, can we move on to what's working in this movie? <laughs> because there's so many good things to talk about. Yeah, oh, we're just gonna keep good. beating up yeah. this second act. <laughs> when when so let's start there. Yeah. When she she hears the person who she thought was dead calling for help. She hears help help, and she runs out to try to go say, see save her friend, and then this freaking mutant bear comes in stalking around them and when it opens up its mouth it that was like one of the most disturbing audio effects i've ever seen yeah. in a monster that yeah. was awesome when uh i so i don't generally like horror films and when this uh bear came out and i was like oh god when it opens its mouth it's gonna be the girl screaming isn't it and i was like don't do that <laughs> that's gonna be disturbing as hell and and it did. It was. Yeah, and it disturbed it me as well. It was blended so well. It was, you know, it's like, Rrrr! Yeah. Like, oh. I was like, oh, God. Yeah, they got me in the chest there. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Really good effect. And pretty much the the entire final, the entire finale Dude. of going and seeing that alien and all the mimicking movements all and right. then so spewing what? Let's, out let's all that. Let's spend stuff. a half an hour talking about <laughs> that scene. Dude. That was awesome. When she... When that thing's cur- so first a drop of her blood yeah b- gets this alien before that wait even before that <laughs> okay okay when she goes into the mysterious anus <laughs> okay when she goes anus. goes into the blue anus hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is a hole in the ground and I'll admit it does sort of have an anal <laughs> look to it she hears um, Doctor <laughs> the the villain what's her crazy? the villain name. What is her name again? Killmonger. Killmonger. <laughs> <laughs> she sees Killmonger. <laughs> it's a Black Panther movie all along. Ventress. 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 Dr. Ventress. Ventress. Yeah. <laughs> she hears Dr. Ventress down there losing her mind. She, like, blows up yeah. in a way that all, at first looked like a really bad visual effect. At first. For a second, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was too. I was but like, oh, it, kept, it kept going, and it turned into something freaking amazing. Yeah. She like dissolves into like a nebula. Yeah, it's yeah. like pulsating, and <laughs> it it looked that was such a like, cool effect from the inside out. Evolved into uh, those things. What do you call those things that go on forever? Those patterns that go on forever and ever and ever. Me? What is it? Is it Taylor? <laughs> I don't, I don't Taylor, know. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it was but awesome. That, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, that was insane. Yeah, I wanted to just keep staring into that. Yeah. But anyway, she's staring at it, and a drop of her blood gets sucked into it. And awesome audio and visual effect when they start showing the cells in her blood duplicating. Duplicating, yeah. And 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 this alien force, whatever you call it, creates a replica of her. Yeah. But it but it's not fully but it's not formed. Complete, yeah. it, like it it was so creepy. Ooh. It, it yeah. sort of looked like liquid Ooh. metal and sort of looked like an amphibian. That whole scene. At the same time, it had no face. She she tries to escape, and when she gets to the top, it's there waiting for her, right? And she knows, like, here's this, like, thing that's going to, like, try to replace me. Right. And she, sh- sh- I just remember she shot it with her machine gun. Yeah. Right? yeah and the bullets, bullets looped into, like... Yeah. Yeah, that is so weird and awesome. Like just streaks. Yeah, yeah it made like, like tentacles coming out of her back. Yeah. <laughs> like it, like, like it had gone, like the bullet had gone in, and then the essence of the bullet had stretched. But out. honestly, the scariest thing in this whole movie yeah. was watching her interact with this thing, who was just trying to mimic her. Yeah. Right. It didn't want to attack her. It didn't want anything. No. That's what was, was so. 
bizarre about this whole thing is like this alien that has come to Earth and is probably going to destroy it is like a plant. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't have an agenda. Yeah. yeah. It's just like yeah. it's like an un it's a super powerful unintelligent life form. Yeah. Right. It's just exists. It's you know <laughs> Like and a plant, that's a good. That's almost yeah. more analogy. scary. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Right? Yeah, well, it makes it has it, no intent. It, yeah. it doesn't have an agenda. You know, it's not there to conquer, but it probably would. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it makes it for feel uh, more believable. Like you can kind of believe that that would happen. And I, and I love that yeah. when she's being interrogated uh, by by the guy in the hazmat suit, he's like, "It is an alien. What did they want?" And she's like, "I, I don't think." <laughs> Any, they wanted anything. Yeah. Anything. I don't think it could want. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, so, that was great. So what what did you guys make of the ending then? So there's this alien clones or mimics other people. Yeah. And Oscar Isaac goes on the mission yeah. to get there and he like kills himself. And then the mimic Oscar Isaac goes back into the into the rest of into the world. Into the rest of the world. So and here yeah. So what's up with the at the end they kinda implied that this Natalie Portman might is be the mimic. Actually, a plot hole. I oh, really? Think. I think. Yeah. What is, uh, what is it? What unless think? they're gonna make a sequel or something. I don't know. But it was. Uh, it's pretty complex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, well, here's why it seems like a plot hole. Yeah. Right. So she watches the video camera, and she sees that a replica replica version, you know, a a mimic version of Oscar Isaac's character has replaced him. Oscar Isaac commits suicide. And the replica leaves and goes and finds her. And that's what, that's what ultimately begins the whole thing, right? Then we assume the same course of action happens to her, right? Where else? Where did this replica of Oscar Isaacs come from? He probably went through a similar experience that she goes through, where this thing is formed and begins to become her. She blows up her replica, person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and uh once she does that the the shimmer disappears everything seems to go back to normal the problem is erased and oscar isaacs like snaps out of his coma and is healthy again but if oscar isaacs is one of those things then it's still alive yeah, yeah. right yeah why why did, uh, why did the shimmer collapse and oh, but all he that stayed. kind of stuff? Yeah. Why didn't either? Why didn't either he just like melt into a puddle or burst into flames? Right. If he's being, you know, like uh, powered by its connection to that. Well, thing? they didn't or, really explain how the replicas work. So right. a replica, once taken a fully form, could maybe just be an independent being. But th then again, it's not. It's not explained at all. It could be. I mean, when she burned, when she set off the grenade on him, um, like it was burning and nothing else was burning. Yeah. And then it started touching things to see. So maybe like that was like worked. a mothership kind of th scenario, like maybe. the like the that cavern underground. Yeah. Maybe that was the source of the power. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's more like what it was, where it was like that was that beacon was like powering. Everything so that else. got rid of the shimmer. Right, but not things on the outside of the shimmer. Right. So so Oscar Isaac's still walking amongst earthlings was created by that force she has some remnant of it in her as well they yeah. show their eyes kind of yeah. the same Rainbow. thing yeah so i don't i don't fully understand the shimmer that. within them yeah. yeah i don't fully get why they would imply that she well i guess she's part replica is that what they were kind of trying to that say she still has it in her or it yeah. just could be from her time her dna being altered yeah. From being oh, yeah. inside there. I that think really it's an sense. open ended thing. Yeah. But now they're gonna have a baby and it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be some shimmer. It's gonna be baby. Prometheus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder if um so that's actually when uh, you said that this is a trilogy of books. Yeah. That got me extremely excited at the idea of a second one. Yeah. Seeing a second one where it's Oscar Isaac replica and Natalie Portman half replica, whatever it is doing stuff in the world and like figuring out who they are like aliens who just became conscious like what's really cool. that's so interesting yeah. so maybe not a plot hole then yeah 
Uh, but still, like, a questionable thing. There was – I don't know if it was an Easter egg or if I if audiences were supposed to pick up on it more or if it's just part of a scene that was cut. But Natalie Portman had that figure eight snake tattoo on her forearm. It was mm-hmm. a figure eight shaped snake, a snake consuming its tail. The dude – uh, who had his gut sliced open, who had like snakes in his gut, and who eventually became fused to a wall, had the same tattoo. Oh. Yeah. Same place. Well, that's very, yeah. very interesting. And when Natalie Portman is explaining to her interrogator, Natalie Portman, Lena, is explaining to her interrogator that the D- that the shimmer was making changes in their dna yeah she glances down at her tattoo hmm. like she looks at it so, and so so maybe that was his is what you're saying yeah she, she got like i'm tattoo. wondering if like if if she was assimilating another person yeah and that was maybe part of the story that got cut out or if i was supposed to pick up on something else that i just didn't pick up on Ma- but, I, th- I think maybe it was not necessarily an Easter egg, but yeah, something that was left in that wasn't fully explained. I want to go back was... and see if she had the tattoo. I don't think she at did. the beginning. I, I feel like I don't remember her having it. Yeah, because she was because you remember she was in the bed. Yeah, with those. Yeah, right. she didn't have a tattoo then. Yeah, so that's yeah. super interesting. Yeah, so I'm wondering if it. Yeah, if it probably copied itself somehow. That's actually really cool. I really really enjoyed how they made alien life feel in this movie. Yeah, uh, this one and Arrival. Those two movies, I feel like, are new explanations of what alien life could be. Yeah. Where it's different than we would have ever even thought of and where it's far beyond our consciousness. I love that idea. Yeah, totally agree. I think all invasion films, and I'll put that in both directions, and that is so like the aliens coming to us or we going to another place. Yeah. um, Are always way too oversimplified. They're way too neat and tidy uh, because the fact is – it, when when something is introduced into an environment or an ecosystem that doesn't belong there, the the chain reactions associated with that would be just gigantic, right? Yeah. And that's what this movie's all about. Totally. That's what Jurassic Park's all about. Right. By the way. It's the same, <laughs> right. That's same true. Same kind of concept. Yeah. Um, and I really like that. Like that a lot. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I uh, I what was I going to say? I really enjoyed this film. Oh, um, the uh, oh, so the way they used horror in this film, um, at least in the third act where she uh, meets the the replica and stuff like that, um, I feel like a lot of that speaks to um, cosmic horror, uh, which is what, what's his name? Who's the guy that does, that makes cosmic? H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, or it's Lovecraftian horror, where uh, things that are happening. That you that we can't really fully grasp, but we but we understand has like um, has abilities to overcome us, mm-hmm. um, and that's what the whole replicant thing was. The whole uh, 4D object that was turning in on itself that sucked in her blood. Yeah, that was so crazy. Like all <laughs> of that gave me such anxiety, but in like a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh my god, like what is that? Like, yeah. It's it's cool. It's cool to see something in a film that you're questioning and at the same time you really you, like you understand that it does exist and they just just refuse to give you the information about it yeah and i love yeah. that i i like that a lot too um i especially love the the just the image of the meteorite falling down from from earth as acoustic guitar plays and then smashes into a lighthouse yeah like, that's awesome just in and of itself i like the image that the the visuals of the yeah. meteor coming down in in most other films meteors are uh are really you, you see them from coming at yeah you. they were they were the the pov was in the tail of <laughs> yeah the, right of the meteor, and it went super fast it was yeah. just <laughs> yeah it was pretty cool yeah did that give you some <laughs> thoughts about a particular movie we want to make someday <laughs> yes it did i, I was, did too I'm i was like, like oh that we could do it that way <laughs> yeah. that's cool that's cool yeah. <laughs> yeah i had that same thought that's awesome um what else is there to say uh did you f- what did you think about uh, earlier in the second act when they're inside the shimmer i kept thinking how did they make those rays of sunlight 
throughout these scenes that oh, are that are rainbow color. multiple colors. Yeah. That was so crazy. Yeah, I couldn't understand <laughs> these rainbow colored sunbeams. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, if they if the answer is as simple as they're just CGI'd in, right? Then that. I, that's an annoying long process. It's it's kind of funny. This that was actually it looked really good. It looked really good. Every, every one of the uh, re- refracting uh, of the lights everywhere in this film, where it was in their irises, where it was in the trees and the ocean, all of it. Um, it took me out of my filmmaker's perspective, actually, <laughs> and I just saw it as a moviegoer. And uh, I was just like, good. "Wow, that's cool!" And I didn't even think about it until now. That's hilarious. They found great ways to keep that. Uh, always in your consciousness. Yeah. yeah. Like you'd see it reflect in the water. Yeah. yeah. Which was really cool. That was There really was cool. one... Um, you never forgot they were within, inside the shimmer. Right. At the beginning of like the third act when uh, Napo- Natalie Portman's on the beach right outside the lighthouse. Yeah. And the water's and, changing. Yeah, you can see the, the <laughs> reflection of like the shimmer in the sky in the water that's yeah. in the sand. <laughs> right. And it's like, how... Because it looks real. It, it does. Very it's so real. crazy. And uh, the crystalline trees. Oh, yeah. That was so awesome. Good. Totally love that. So, Beautiful. So did you guys, I don't know, the the skeletons that were in front of the cave. If, but near the White House. Or near the, near the, the lighthouse. lighthouse. What did you think those were? Because I already have well, ideas. Well, so first they show like a reverse angle where you just see the back, right? Yeah. And you see the, I guess they're like a... It's the ribs and spine sticking right. out of the ground of several skeletons. And then later they flip around and you see skulls. and So these are all human bones that were laid out by mm-hmm. someone mm-hmm. intelligent. Um, I'm assuming that they're people who went through this crazy process there as well and interacted with the intelligence and lost their minds and killed each other or were killed by it. I don't know. Is, is that what you think? Um I think maybe when uh, pretty much that, like maybe when the replica uh, takes its form fully, maybe it like consumes the other person and then like just puts the bones out there or whatever. I, I like, like both those ideas. The, yeah. the what I thought it was was uh, were rocks. They were natural forming rocks. <laughs> oh, f- rocks that were, f- but rocks don't oh. have DNA. No, no. You're thinking you're <laughs> thinking rocks that formed into the shape that of formed into bones. the shape of bones. Yeah, that's cool. Um, the, no, you're right. Rocks don't have... Of course, neither do crystals. Right. So I was thinking because that the crystalline trees, I thought yeah. those were rocks that were crystals that grew into a tree. Yeah. Well, crystals do grow. You're right. Right. That's true. Uh, yeah. But, but the, that's uh, true. Why the side of the lighthouse... Crystals, the crystalline <laughs> trees, I'm not sure if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> the side of the lighthouse, though, also looked like it was forming into vines. Yeah, And also the concrete walls had that type of cancer that they were talking about that was on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I so I want to say that there's the more the rocks. Yeah. Like so this ref, refracting concept. Yeah. Is is deeper than DNA. There's something else going on there. If it's affecting the way its crystals form, if it's yeah. affecting even the stonework. Well, I think. But those were definitely like bones. Cells, though. They were definitely bones. I think yeah. so. I want to say they're rocks. <laughs> All right. Fine. I'm gonna say they're rocks. <laughs> say it. <laughs> they're rocks. Uh, it's been said. <laughs> One thing I always appreciate from movies is when uh, gore is done a very particular way. And mm. that particular way would be just blatantly showing it without cutting away whatsoever. Uh-huh. So in like reference the to to the uh, when Oscar Isaac stabs oh, yeah. the dude. Yeah, that was such a weird scene. Yeah, that was, that was creepy. They just go right up on his chest or his stomach. And Oscar Isaac just takes the knife and just... Sh- and I was the like, guy oh, they're didn't cut away? seem like nope. he was in terrible pain. Yeah, that's and not he right. seemed like he was He's, cooperating. Yeah, right. he was like, he was like, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. He was like proud <laughs> so, or something. Yeah. I almost want to see the, the prequel now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Follow that team and see what their experience was. <laughs> yeah. was freaking nuts. That was yeah. crazy. I, I love when that can happen, when they just show they just show it. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that in with Oscar Isaac's team, Kane? Kane. Yeah. Kane's yeah. team. Uh, He's the lone survivor that makes it to the lighthouse. Mm-hmm. And then with Lena's team, she's the lone survivor. I mean, Was Ventress it makes chosen? it there too, Ventress, but, right. but Lena's the one who, who survives. Right. Was it predestined? I don't think so. The aliens were like, you two. No, these aliens <laughs> don't think. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what, I love that They're so just much. a very evolved plant. Yeah, yeah. That, they're, yeah. yeah okay. that they're a plant. 
That's like so cool. That is cool. Yeah. That it takes on consciousness because it can grow that way. Yeah. Just because it can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So going back to that uh, rep- replica part um, with the silver her. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the mimicry the mi- scene was so <laughs> creepy. When she When she runs past it and then goes to the door... It's like it's mirroring what she's doing, and she's trying to press against it at the same time. It's pressing against her because yeah. that's what she's doing. Yep. And she gets almost so she crushed. She almost to gets death, killed, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because it's what she's doing. It hits her <laughs> because she hits it. Right. And then when she runs to the door, it tries to do the same thing. Yeah. And it, she slams into the wall, so he it slams, so he slams into, into the, the wall. Right. Yeah. And then <laughs> as she's pushing, trying to get out, it's pushing, it's pushing back, back in. Yeah. Almost, yeah. But that bit. When she then is passing out and she falls, yeah, yeah, and the the mimicker falls, also falls exactly <laughs> the same yeah. in like perfect sync, and just lays there until she gets until up, she gets and they up. just <laughs> perfect. It was so bizarre. Yeah, you know, I feel like that's going to become one of those really iconic scenes mm. from sci-fi movies, if not yeah. just movies in general. I've never seen anything like that. Dude, that it was, was very cool. That was some nightmare f- fuel. That, that's that like, was nightmare fuel. <laughs> that was really crazy. Yeah, I was just like, oh, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> oh, wait, you know what she could have done? She could have just stood there and then just just turned. You know, it's so actually, I kept thinking about that. I Which wondered she actually if, if she was going to circle with it. Yeah. But when what was weird was when she first started doing it, and she was she was like going to the right, and it was going to the left, and then she crossed and it went like that. And every time she went to the center, it would go where she was going. So it looked like she was trapped, and it looked like it doesn't matter where she turned, it would be there where she was. Hmm. Um, I think it had two agendas, and that was one, not to let her leave, and right. two, to touch her. Yeah, I think I think it was. It was to mim- mimic her and to touch her. So that's why she's he's. It's always getting closer. Yeah, because once it. They touched. Yeah, because it did want to touch her. Yeah. The the visual of it assuming <laughs> that was crazy. Was weird. Yeah. Yeah. Was really disturbing. <laughs> oh. where, where, yeah, where it was like part her face, part yeah, not like smeared face. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Body horror. Yeah, that was oh. some body horror. Some craziness. Good. Oh, yeah, loved that. So man, the design uh, again, just awesome. Yeah, awesome design. I loved the world building. I loved. Uh, the performances, I love the music, and uh, really the overall story. And even if, if we have to, I'll agree with you that maybe the middle was just a little bit tropey, but uh, a tiny bit. I think it's still. I think it broke out pretty well. Well, well within, well within uh, being able to sit through Absolutely. to get to the awesome. It's a really, end. really good movie. Uh, you know what was interesting about the part where they're looking onto the tape of the of Kane and his team. Um, and it, it didn't happen until then when I was thinking, oh, this is a team of just girls. <laughs> and I didn't think about it until Women. I was like, until it's, I, I was, I understood it's an all-female lead. Thank you. Without, without it needing to be like a big deal. Yeah. You know? It just, it was. It just was. Yeah. And I loved that so much. Yeah. You know? Uh, what's her name? Who's the girl that played the tough woman? Tough, <laughs> the tough girl in here? <laughs> Do you mean... Dr. Ventress? Jason, Jason Lee. No, the... Jason, Jennifer, Jason. Are you talking about which one? The Gina girl. Rodriguez? Yeah, yeah, her. Yeah. Whose character was Anya? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen that kind of character in, like, several other films that yeah, it, doesn't seem to work. It, it's a, a type, for sure. Yeah. But her character in here, I don't know if it was just because it started out as her hitting on... on uh, what's her name? On Lena. But... Uh, for some reason, that character type worked really well for me here. And I think it's because they didn't say, you know, this is a girl who can stand her ground, who's strong like a guy. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. it wasn't that. It was just, it's just a girl, and she just happens to be this way. Mm. You know, it wasn't a tropey kind of thing. Uh, the one thing that I hated was the way James Cameron did, what's her name, in Aliens. Not not the main character. Not Ripley. Not Ripley. Newt? Was it Newt, the little, the little girl? She is yeah. a girl, by the way, not a woman. The little woman, <laughs> the little woman, the the person that had the, that was always uh, having guns everywhere with her. And oh was, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tough, the tough girl, t- tough woman, <laughs> tough female. 
the tough little woman. <laughs> I don't. I don't know where this is going. Stop anymore. saying I don't get, girls. I don't get this, man. What's up with genders? But have but have you seen? You've seen that trope yeah. before, though. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so I don't know. I I never liked it anywhere else. I really liked it in this film because it wasn't tropey. Yeah, and she's always like obsessed with firearms, right? And carries lots of like grenades yeah. and like armor. She wears like guys. tank tops. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. that's true. You do see that in Overdone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But this, Although this it, it felt nice. I kind of think James Cameron created that. He, he may have. I think yeah. that was like where have. it but I like Rip- started. I like Ripley's character better than that other character in that movie, in Aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. I, f- I felt like uh, Lena uh, is right up there with Ripley and with Sarah Connor as uh, those just really strong but totally flawed yeah. Uh, awesome female characters. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you have a character who's just great and also whatever, she's female, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. It's like Black Panther. Yeah, these p- characters are great and whatever, they're black, sure, but they're awesome characters. I actually think it's more, what's more important about it, it isn't, isn't gender, but right. the fact that um, she's a damaged human being. Right, right. Um, I just, and, and the same was true about Sarah Connor. And, and Ripley, you know, I can see people complex saying complex and real. I can I can see people stepping out of their way to mention the gender stuff in this, or uh, like the race thing in, in Black Panther. A, a lot of movies that have an all female cast, they like they like bank on it in marketing, in which right. this film has and not done. So at yeah, all. yeah, this had. What Ghostbusters to or whatever yeah, right. that Ghostbusters exactly. reboot? This they even had the giant backpacks. Yeah, and guns. <laughs> right. they kind of looked guns. like the Ghostbusters, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it and it was an all female you know super team. Yeah, yeah. and did it and, so much uh, better. No one ever, not a lick of marketing pointed it out. Yeah, yeah. and I, is, I loved that so much. Which is good, yeah. refreshing. Great. It is. I refreshing. just like to know that we're all just people, and we're great at doing things. You know. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about also the cinematography. Mm. Cinematography I loved in this film so much. Um, was it the same person who shot a, uh, not Arrival, uh, Ex Machina? I'll like, tell you. I would feel like I it would was. bet. Yeah, it definitely had a very similar feel. From what I get here, on the from from facts I'm pulling from my brain <laughs> right now. Memorized facts. <laughs> Memorized facts. Yes. Memorized uh, movie facts. It just takes me a minute to <laughs> get the data. Cinematography by Rob Hardy. That. Who did Ex Machina? Yeah. Uh, Rob Hardy did this film? Yep. Yeah. So those shots. He also did the upcoming Mission Impossible Fallout. Hey. Is that the one we're seeing? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the one coming out this year. Um, yeah, dude, the cinematography I freaking loved in this. <clears throat> I felt like it was so well designed. Just so well done. Um there's a lot of people that I know that are very big film enthusiasts or filmmakers themselves that look at cinematography and will say this shot, sometimes a shot is just a shot. And I can agree that for the most part, when you're making movies, if you're doing an over shoulder, you're doing it because it's an over the shoulder and you need to show dialogue. Yep. In this, I felt like every single shot was intentional and was meant to be that way for the story. Um, when they do you know, whether it was wides, whether if it was OTS, all the stuff was so uh, good. Like one of the things that that I liked so much about it was that it wasn't stylized. It was just it was just done well. You know, you can see stylized cinematography, like in uh, um, shoot, I don't remember many of the films, but I can think of Scott Pilgrim versus the World, for instance, was stylized a certain way. It was good, but it was stylized. Same with 300, you know, or anything that Larry Fong shoots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all of it's super stylized, but not for a specific reason. Everything in this, I felt like, was done for a specific reason. I loved it. Mm. Cool. Agree. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> well, I kind of feel like I've said everything I'd like to say for now about this film. Uh Same. I feel I feel it's sad that the best um, the best little slice of PR that they were able to get that they're using in all the marketing is a line that says "will be hailed as a masterpiece." 
Yeah, that's a really unfortunate. And 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 that was on all their posters and stuff before the film came out. And so it <laughs> sounded like they were making a claim like, yeah. "Come see our movie. It will be hailed as a masterpiece." <laughs> I'm just like, "Man, as the filmmaker in me just wishes like, why couldn't they have just said a masterpiece? Yeah. Yeah. Why couldn't they have said that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Dang it. <laughs> yeah. This film was it was so neat to see. Yeah. Just like yeah. being in here. Yeah. It's definitely one one you should go see. Because, like, again, like, these movies that do this kind of stuff should be supported financially. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, and, it, and it is a better experience on in a theater than it would be, I think, in, you know, a home situation. There's a presence that theaters have uh, yeah. that <laughs> it makes me think that anyone who wants to go see Mother should probably see it on our TV. <laughs> so, I mean, like, yeah, some movies are they're suited for certain things. You know? I like being in a theater – uh, and watching a movie like Mother, because I enjoy the audience around me being made uncomfortable. <laughs> I really like that. For yeah. for me, it's so overbearing. You know, the screen is so big, the sound is so full, and I'm so isolated in the dark room. It feels uh, like that's, that's, that's what that's I love. Part of the intention. No, that's yeah. great. Yeah, they want to do that to you. Yeah, when it intensifies. You know, it'd be cool to stuff, see you know? a, a movie like Mother. Like the next time we go see just some kind of intense mind blower. Yeah, we should go to the Tower Theater. The tower, yeah. What is it? Because I felt like I felt like the, it was like a really visceral place. <laughs> uh, it's not a place you sink into your chair and just get comfortable and go. Ah, oh. I, I wasn't comf- comfortable at all during Annihilation. <laughs> Why not? I was. I mean, I was laying down what and a lazy boy. No, no, it felt good, but as if it, it, it pulled anxiety so much from me. This movie. <laughs> I just mean if you were watching, like... if you were watching <laughs> Mother <laughs> in a theater, yeah. where the seats are at this like. 50 degree incline <laughs> Where you're doing on this. hard wood floors <laughs> with chairs that don't recline, you're going to have a more um, intense experience. More focused. Yeah. I actually like that a little bit uh, more. For, I guess it, no, it all depends. Um, I actually fell asleep a little bit in this movie. You did? I did. I did. <laughs> I hate to admit it. It's not a sleeper, folks. I just <laughs> trust me. It, it's a good movie. <laughs> I'd even have to say that. Taylor's like <laughs> Taylor's really stealing all the thunder from what is a, really an excellent film. <laughs> this movie's good, goddammit. <laughs> Seems like Taylor was more enthusiastic about Black Panther. <laughs> and he has, oh, this this is a better movie than Black Panther. Completely agree. Actually I wholeheartedly agree with that. Thank you. <laughs> Stop throwing shade. <laughs> but see that's what I that's I get more passionate about it because I guess I judge movies a little bit harsher, th- movies that are like this a little bit harsher. So when something's a masterpiece, yeah, you feel I, like it needs to live up to all the masterpiece. Yeah. I, I feel like that too. Yeah. So like, well, I can really like Black Panther because it's way better than all the other comic book films. It's a, and, and it made a statement of what it's supposed to be right. and then exceeded it. Right. Yeah. That's why it's That's so it. good. And then the That's problem it. is I expected this movie to be a little bit different than when it was. And I was thinking a lot about Stalker for the past couple days before <laughs> watching it. So I was nice. kind of setting myself up for for disappointment, for a little bit of disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> for just for just changed expectations. Yeah, yeah. All right, so go into this movie um, expecting that it'll suck. <laughs> just just buy into what Taylor said about the second act. It's just man, it's like every other one. But see it no, anyway. Well, hopefully, you've already seen it, <laughs> and then you'll. Wa- oh yeah, we're not recommending you see it anymore because this is the spoiler section. Uh, ah, it's too late. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. Um, Doesn't make sense. Final thoughts. Amazing masterpiece. Love it. Very very good. I liked it a lot. I'm putting up all three of my thumbs for this one. <laughs> yep. Three. Yep. <laughs> Three thumbs up. <laughs> Three uh, thumbs up. <laughs> had a genuinely great time. I cannot wait to see more. Oh man, from I, Mr. Alex. I really hope they expand on this uh, Alex universe. Garland. Yeah, but I but I'm kind of skeptical because if Alex isn't doing the other one, that's the thing. If yeah, if I don't, they did a sequel, with I don't Anna feel like it needs to happen. Or... I'm totally fine with them not. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's going to end, and I really want some more. Yeah. Like I really like that universe. I, at least Alex's universe. He has this way of just, like, you know how Denis uh, does, like, really intimate films, uh, like Arrival and Blade Runner? Uh, this guy does, like, really, like, he, he uh, 
What the, who's David Fincher? He he David Fincher's more than David Fincher. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Do you, you know how David Fincher's films feel? His tone? Like House of Cards. Like you've watched House of Cards? Yeah. So how can he make a political thriller feel like it's an actual thriller? Like you're in danger. Like you're watching it and you're like right. biting your nails. And it's super boring. Like, But you're like, oh, oh what's going to happen? Right. Like, David Fincher is so masterful at that. Right. So you mean while in reality both this and Ex Machina yeah. have like a very slow burn sort of feel. Exactly. Uh, yet you're on the edge of your seat. You are. Yeah. 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 It's it's slow and holy crap does it does it do well. Yeah. You know? Bravo, Alex. Bring us another one. Uh, if if you'd like to hear more from the three of us uh, film loving and hating weirdos, you can uh, find more episodes of the Talkies on YouTube. Just be sure to subscribe. We also have a few other shows like WTF M Night Shyamalan, which will blow your mind just as much as any film <laughs> by an Alex has. Garland. <laughs> it's a total total mind blower. No tropes in that one. No tropes. Zero mm. tropes. Maybe a little NPR Maybe. tropes. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, WTF M. Night Shyamalan confirmed the edgy, deep, uh, philosophical... <laughs> philosophical uh, is right. ...video yeah. game analysis starring Dean Taylor. Lit. And, of course... <laughs> Dink. ...execs are... New show. Weekly? Bi-weekly? Bi- it, every I'm going to so really often, try hard to make it uh, weekly. Look, behind the scenes, look at the life of... Three studio executives, on namely paper. the three of us. So if you want to see what we do. As you actually get to see what, what we do, do for a living beyond just this show. <laughs> uh, check that those out. They're a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, as always, follow us on social media. Say hi and uh, uh, post any questions about the movies we're covering, and we'll share them here on the show next week. What is next week? I think next week is Pacific Rim No two. way. No way. I think can't be an oh. isle of dogs already and isle of dogs <laughs> what hold on <laughs> next week will be insane if, if if that's true next week is is death wish sweet yeah we're gonna see death wish. i'm looking forward to that one what is death wish it's this really really we stupid saw the trailer no i saw the trailer but i mean what like is it you know, there's a series is. of is them. it part yeah there's a series right? yeah, no there. but this looks like a reboot this is it is new. a reboot yeah. so so it is a reboot of something that yeah happened. it's okay. based off of these five like really really stupid ab- absurdly brutal and tasteless crime films it's interesting because the trailer makes it look generic I feel like it'll be. I feel like it'll be better than than. Well, right. I mean, just, just, I mean. So I'm looking this forward to this. This episode is not about Death Wish. Let's just say this for now. <laughs> Let's talk about Death Wish. Let's just say <laughs> that in in the upcoming weeks we will be covering Death Wish, A Wrinkle in Time, oh, yeah. Thoroughbreds, yes, Tomb Raider. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. It might be good. It might be good. I'm not really looking forward to then, Wrinkle in Time. Better uh, cool the trailer. Isle of Dogs and Pacific Rim. Uprising. Now that's what that's what we're waiting that's for. It, and right. then that's finally, what we're rounding out March, the last movie of March is going to be Ready Player One. Cool. So cool. we've got a lot of stuff ahead of us that is going to be both wonderful and terrible. Yep. And you will get to hear all about <laughs> it here on the talkie. Yes, sir. And until next time, I am Kenny. I am D. I am Taylor. And we will see you at the talkies. <laughs> Boom. Bartobian pictures, you're wonderful to see. You are to be in pictures, oh, what a hit you would be. Your voice would thrill a nation. <laughs>